بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وی اسٹارٹ انادر ایپیسوڈ آف سم ویڈیوز آن ہاؤ یو آر گوئنگ ٹو ہینڈل دا پیپر فور ناؤ دس یوز ٹو بی کالڈ پیپر سکس ان دی اولڈن ڈیز ٹل ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی تھری اینڈ فروم دس ایئر لٹل بی کالڈ پیپر فور بٹ اٹ ہیز سم چینجز ٹو اٹ وچ آئی ول بی ڈسکسنگ ود یو آل ناؤ آئی تھنک آئی وانٹ یو ٹو بی ایڈوکیٹ یو اباؤٹ از یور سلیبس یو مسٹ آلویز لک ایٹ دا سلیبس You must look at the year of the exam. So this is for 2023, 2024 and 2025. So this came to us last year so that we know that when we are teaching the students, we have to teach them this syllabus. Now, I would like you to look at some of the points of this syllabus and what is, uh, what is expected from you in this uh, uh, paper four. As you can see that either you do a paper three, which is the practical exam. And this is for one hour, 30 minutes. We don't do it in Pakistan anymore. And this used to be for 40 marks. Now, The alternative which we have, it has an or here, you do the paper four, which is an alternative to practical. And this is for one hour and for 40 marks and questions will be based on the experimental skills in section four. Now, what is section four? Uh, I hope you've talked about uh, this in our school and somehow with our teachers who must have told you about this section four. So I'm going to be discussing that section four with you now. Oh, uh, this is a section four details of the assessment. You know, paper one will be multiple choice. We all know that that's going to be in June. Theory paper, you've just taken it. That was for 80 marks and it was for one hour, 45 minutes. You have to do this and this, right? And now in the practical assessment, it says either you do paper three or you do a paper four, which is the alternative to practical. And it says this paper test assessment objective AO3 candidates will not be required to do experiments as part of this test and is externally assessed. The practical test and alternative to practical requires the same experimental skills to be developed and learned, requires an understanding of the same experimental context and test the same assessment objectives AO3. Candidates are expected to be familiar with and may be asked questions using the following experimental contexts. Simple quantitative experiments including the measurement of volume of gases or solutions or liquids, masses, temperatures, times, lengths. Diffusion osmosis food test. We must know all the food tests. We must revise all the food tests. Rate of enzyme catalyzed reactions. pH under the use of hydrogen carbonate indicator, litmus and universal indicator. Photosynthesis in which you have to study the rate and the limiting factors. Effect of mineral ions on plant, plant growth, nitrate ions, magnesium ions. If a plant does not get nitrate ions, what will happen? Stunted growth. If it doesn't get magnesium, magnesium is required for the chlorophyll molecule. So less chlorophyll, less photosynthesis, less glucose, less growth, less respiration, less energy released. Then transpiration, heart rate and breathing rate, respiration, tropic responses. Now this is new. Then nervous responses, then observation and dissection of seeds and flowers, then germination. Then continuous and discontinuous variation, sampling techniques, use a microscope to examine biological specimens, calculate the magnification of biological specimens, procedures using simple apparatus in situations where the method may not be familiar to the candidate. Then demonstrate knowledge of how to select and safely use techniques, apparatus and materials, including following a sequence of instructions where appropriate. Identify apparatus from diagrams or descriptions. Draw, complete or label diagrams of apparatus and biological specimens. Use or explain the use of common techniques, apparatus and materials. Select the most appropriate apparatus or method for the task and justify the choice made. Describe food test. Describe test to determine the pH of solutions and substances. Describe and explain hazards and identify safety precautions. Describe and explain techniques used to ensure the accuracy of observations. So accuracy is something else and reliability is something else. So there are two different words. In reliability, we say uh, repeat the experiment. R for reliability, R for repeat. Repeat. But accuracy is something else. I will be talking to you about accuracy. You must Google it and see what accuracy means. Then the next thing is plan experiments and investigation. This is going to be a six marks. as you will see uh, as I go along. Identify the independent variable and the dependent variable. This is very important. I'm going to be just talking about this in a minute. Describe how and explain why variable should be controlled. Suggest an appropriate number and range of values for the independent variable. Like for instance, if you're going to change the temperature, 
then what temperatures are you going to take 30 degrees celsius 35 degrees celsius 40 degrees celsius 45 degrees and 50 degrees now why won't you take more than this or less than this because the usual enzymes work in this sort of uh, these range of temperatures suggest the most appropriate apparatus or techniques and justify the choice made describe experimental procedures identify risk and suggest safety precautions Describe how to record the results of an experiment. How do you make a table? What do you write in the first table? What do you write in the headings? You write the units in the heading. For instance, if you are writing temperature, if you are writing temperature, then you write degrees Celsius in the heading here. And then you don't write it in the, in the lower part of the column. You don't write it here. It would be wrong. If you are writing time in seconds here, so you write time seconds. And then you write whatever you want to write here, here, here. But then you don't write the units in the in this part of the table. You don't write the units here. You only write the units in the headings. So you only write the units in the headings. So describe how to record the results of an experiment. Describe how to process the results to form a conclusion or to evaluate a prediction. Make reasoned predictions of expected results. Then make and record observation measure, measurements and estimates. Make, record, make and record observations, measurements and estimates. Take readings from apparatus, analog and digital, or from diagrams of apparatus with uh, appropriate precision. Observe and take measurements from biological specimens or images of specimens. Take sufficient observations or measurements, usually five, including repeats where appropriate. Record qualitative observations from food and other tests. Record observations and measurements systematically, for example, in a suitable table to an appropriate degree of precision and using appropriate units. Then interpret and evaluate experimental observations and data. Process data, including for use in future cal further cal calculations of a graph plotting using a calculator as appropriate. Present data graphically. <clears throat> Analyze and interpret observations and data, including data presented graphically. Use interpolation and extrapolation graphically to determine a gradient or intercept. Form conclusions justified by reference to observations and data with appropriate explanations. Evaluate the quality of observations and data, identifying any anomalous results. What is the anomalous result? It doesn't fit a pattern. For instance, the rate is 10 and then the other reading is 12 and then it is 11 and then there is a reading which is 40 now this is something wrong in this because this is not the trend the 10 the trend is say 10 bubbles per minute or 12 bubbles or 11 bubbles and suddenly there is a 40. i always give you an example of a student who usually gets about marks between 50 and uh, 60 in his tests in his monthly tests and suddenly in one monthly test he gets 90 marks there's something wrong either he's been sitting next to somebody very bright and uh, bright and smart or he is uh, using some unfair means so anomalous reading now this is called an anomalous result this means it's a mistake it's an anomaly it's not the normal pattern the normal pattern is 10 12 11 this is the normal pattern evaluate methods and suggest possible improvements evaluate experimental arrangements methods and techniques including the use of a control what is a control a control is for comparison you compare it. Like, for instance, you're studying uh, yeast. Now, you know yeast contains enzymes. So, in another similar experiment, what you will do is you will use boiled yeast. Now, this boiled yeast is the control. Why? Because what have you done when you have boiled the yeast? You have denatured the enzymes. So, if you have denatured the enzyme, now it is not going to work. But if the same reaction still occurs, then that means it wasn't the enzymes in the yeast, it was something else. So, including the use of a control. Identify sources of error, suggest possible improvements to the apparatus, experimental arrangements, methods or techniques. Apparatus, materials and reagents. These lists give items to the candidate should be familiar with using whether they are taking the practical test or the alternative to practical. These items should be available for use in the practical test. These lists are not exhaustive and we may also require other items to be sourced for specific examinations. The confidential instructions we send before the practical test will give the detailed requirements. Hazard codes are used. 
were relevant in accordance with the information by CLEPS. Students should be familiar with the meaning of these codes and terms, but will not be assessed on them. So C is corrosive, HH is health hazard, F is flammable, N is hazardous to the aquatic environment, MH is moderate hazard, T is acutely toxic, and O is oxidizing. So you will not be examined in this, but you must know if we use these words in the thing. Then, of course, comes biological materials, uh, selection of prepared slides of plant and animal tissue relating to the syllabus content, locally available terrestrial and aquatic plant material, and yeast. Chemical reagents, which we must know about, is agar jelly, benedict solution, biuret reagent, buffer solutions, buffer tablets are commonly available, carbohydrates, starch, glucose, sucrose, dilute acid, dilute alkali, distilled or deionized water. We use this word. Enzymes, eosin, dye or a red ink, and ethanol and hydrogen peroxide. Indicators, red and blue litmus paper or litmus solutions, iodine and potassium iodide solution, lime water, methylene blue, petroleum jelly, sodium chloride, sodium hydrogen carbonate. Apparatus, what you should be familiar with and you must know it. Aluminium foil, balance to measure, beakers, bungs to fit small test tubes and large test tubes, bungs with delivery tubes, capillary tubes, clamp, dishes, electric fan, electric lamp, filter paper, forceps, funnels, glass microscope slides, glass rods. Hand lenses, heat proof mats, tripods and gauzes, means of cutting biological materials, scalpels or sharp knives, means of heating, Bunsen burner, spirit burner, means of writing on glassware, wax pencil or a marker, measuring cylinders, microscope, uh, mortars and pestle, mounted needles, partially permeable membrane, ruler, scissors, small dropper, spotting tile. You must know these names because when you are writing the planning, then you must use these names. Stopwatch, syringes, test tubes, test tube racks, thermometer, wash bottle, white tile. So these are all the apparatus that I expect you to know. If you don't know any of these, please Google it and find out and what it looks like. And you should, have, of course, become aware of it, but maybe you've not done it in school. So I don't, I'm not uh, saying anything which you've done something your school has done wrong. I don't like the blame game to blame anybody, you or the school or the teacher or anybody. So if you're not uh, sure of anything, just Google it and have a look at it. I'll try to put as many pictures as I can so that uh, you can have a look at all these uh, later on in this video. Then mathematical requirements is it's expected that these requirements will be covered as part of the mathematics curriculum. Numbers, add, subtract, multiply, divide, use decimal fraction, ratio, reciprocals, calculate and use percentage and percentage change. Use standard form, use decimal places appropriately, use significant figures, make estimates of number, quantities and length, algebra, Substitute values of quantities into equations using consistent units. Solve simple algebraic equations. Recognize and use direct and inverse proportion. Geometry. Understand the meaning of angle, curve, circle, radius, diameter, circumference, square, rectangle, and diagonal. Recall and use the equations for the area of a rectangle, area of a triangle, and area of a circle. Recall and use the equations for the volume of a rectangular block and volume of a cylinder. Understand surface area and use surface area to volume ratio. Use scale diagrams. Select and use the most appropriate units for recording data and the results of calculations. Convert between metric units including micrometer, millimeter, centimeter, and meter, centimeter cube, dm cube, milligram, gram, and kilogram. Use mathematical instruments, ruler, and protractor. Graph charts and statistics. Draw charts and graphs from data. Interpret chart and graph including interpolation and extrapolation of data. Determine the gradient or slope of a line on a graph. Determine the intercept of the line on a graph, extending the line graphically, extrapolating where appropriate. Select suitable scales and axes for graphs. Recognize directly proportional from a graph. Use and interpret Venn diagrams to show groupings and sets. Calculate the mean and range of a set of values and use simple probability. Data should be recorded so as to reflect the precision of the measuring instrument. That is the smallest difference that can reliably be detected on the measuring instrument. Scale should be reflected by the number of decimal places given in the measurement. A measurement or calculated quantity must be accompanied by a correct unit where appropriate. Each column of a table should be headed with the name or symbol of the measured or calculated quantity and the appropriate unit example time should be given in seconds. The solidus line is to be used for separating the quantity and the unit in tables, graphs, and charts. 
unit should not be included with the data in the body of the table. The number of significant given for measured quantity should be appropriate to the measuring instrument used. Graphs. The column headings of the table can be directly transferred to the axis of a constructed graph. A graph should be drawn with a sharp pencil. The axis should be labeled with the name or symbol of the measured or calculated quantity and the appropriate unit example time in seconds. Unless unstructured otherwise, the independent variable should be plotted on the x-axis, horizontal axis, and the dependent variable plotted on the y-axis. This is very important that you remember this. Unless instructed otherwise, the scales for the direction should allow more than half of the graph grid to be used in both directions and be based on sensible ratios. Example, two centimeters on the graph grid representing one, two, or five units of the variable. Points on the graph should be clearly marked either as a cross or in circle dot, or I said. Each data point should be plotted to an accuracy of one half of one of the smaller scales on the grid. Please understand that this is the square on the grid, so one half of it. Uh, a best fit line should be a single thin smooth straight line or curve drawn by the inspection. The line does not need to coincide exactly with any of the points where there is scatter evident in the data. Examiners would expect a roughly even distribution of points either side of the line over its entire length. Points that are clearly anomalous should be ignored when drawing the best fit line. Candidates should be able to make readings from the graph by extrapolation or interpolation. Data values should be read from a line on the graph to an accuracy of one half of one of the smaller squares on the grid. The same accuracy should be used in reading of an intercept. Drawing. These should be drawn using a sharp pencil to give fine lines that are clear and unbroken. These should use most of the available space and show all the features observed in a specimen with no shading. Label lines should be drawn with a ruler and touch the object or feature labeled. Charts, pie charts are generally used to show percentage of proportional data. Bar charts should be drawn for categorical or discrete data. They should have bars of equal width that do not touch. So this is a bar chart. They should not touch. But the histogram should be drawn for a continuous data. In a histogram, then they touch. So histogram should be drawn for a continuous data. You should have bars that touch. So this is a histogram. This is a bar chart. There's a difference between the two. Please be very clear about it. Uh, now, as we look at the new syllabus, it says changes to assessment, including changes to specimen papers, including changes to specimen. Uh, the alternative to practical paper, previously paper six is now paper four. Both paper three and paper four will contain a six mark planning question. This is the one which you have to be very, very well prepared for. So these are the changes to the syllabus and these are the, these are the things that you need to know for the paper four. So as we look at the syllabus, it says types of variables. So we're going to be talking about two things, independent, dependent and independent variable. Now dependent variable is what you measure in an experiment and you graphed on the y axis. Unpredictable change, we don't know how it will change until we do the experiment. Like for instance, if I say, how does light intensity, how does light intensity affect the, so light intensity is what you are going to change, that will be the independent variable. So when you move the lamp, you're going to change the light intensity. That is the independent variable. So that is what I change, independent I. What I change in the experiment graphed on the x-axis. And predictable change, it only changes because you made it change. Now, how are you going to measure the rate of photosynthesis? Now, if you're going to measure the rate of photosynthesis by the number of oxygen bubbles produced per unit time, now that number of bubbles produced per unit time will be the dependent variable. So you are not going to measure the process. The process is rate of photosynthesis. But how are you measuring it is the number of bubbles produced per unit time. So you are not going to be telling me the name of the process. You're going to tell me how you are going to measure the process, the rate of photosynthesis. So that is the number of uh, bubbles of oxygen produced per unit time. Another way to explain this is independent is the, the one thing you change, limit to only one in an experiment. Types of variables, dependent is what? The change that happens because of the independent variable. And controlled is everything you want to remain constant and unchanging. And another way to explain it, Dependent variable is a factor measured in an experiment. 
Independent versus dependent variable. Independent variable, the variable the researcher changes. Application of fertilizer in this experiment. Dependent variable affected by change in the independent variable is the plant growth or the number of leaves or the number of fruits in this experiment. Control variables, does red light affect plant growth? Independent variable is light color. Dependent variable is plant height. What do we control? Water, soil, temperature, day and night time. Then coming to another point which has been mentioned in the syllabus, interpolation and extrapolation. Interpolation and extrapolation are mathematical names given to the process of reading graphs. Interpolation, estimating information within a graph. So there is a graph and something like this. And these are the points on the graph. So I said, okay, calculate something which is on the x-axis. So you calculate this here or so calculate something here. So this would be interpolation. Extrapolation means you extend the graph. So you extend the graph, like for instance, you see the gradient and then you extend it like this. And then you see something here and find the value here. So extrapolation, extending the graph to estimate an information. Now you can see here also the process of estimating an unknown value that exists within or between a known sequence of data points, interjections, insertion. Extrapolation, the process of estimating an unknown value that exists outside a sequence of data points drawing a conclusion like for instance here you can see this interpolation so these were all the data points that were given here these data points here 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 so anything in this you've drawn a line of best fit and then you have to calculate something at the point here so then you can see what is the point here on the graph but when you extrapolate means you either you extend it this way or you extrapolate it like this so you just extend the a line of best fit and that of course is outside the points is unreliable in between the points it is reliable uh, now we look at the names of some of the normal laboratory equipment dropper y tube beaker trough gas jar flask uh, flat bottom conical flask conical flask tube test tube test tube u tube pear shaped flask crucible uh, u tube dripping cannula Measuring cylinder, evaporation dish, watch glass, uh, acid burette, and alkaline burette. Then another diagram, pipettes, test tube rack, test tube, beaker, tongs, dropper, graduated cylinder, syringe, alcohol burner, Dunson burner, tuning fork, stethoscope, thermometer, uh, stopwatch, and uh, then we have uh, magnifier. So these are the ones that we need for biology. I won't be talking about the other ones because we don't need them for the biology paper. We probably need them for other subjects. Uh, but this is some of the laboratory equipment that we're going to be talking about very frequently. Uh, thank you. This uh, finishes the introduction to paper four. We will look. We will. Uh, I will solve a few more papers to help you all to do these uh, questions which are going to be coming in the uh, upcoming exam. So all the best and thank you very much for watching and thank you for subscribing. And uh, please uh, get, please subscribe and uh, so that you are notified when a new uh, video comes on the channel. Thank you very much.